Hi, and welcome to Team Banana. I'm Banana J, and in this episode, we're going to be looking at mixers. No, not the DJing type, but the type used in remote control models. And specifically, uh, we're looking at ones that are going to be suitable for using in featherweight combat robots. Now, we've got two in mind, which we'll place out on the map. And basically, people have been asking me which one's the best one because these two on the map right now are the two main sort of competitors that are used out there. Now, you've got the sort of cheapest chips version. There we go. Right, so this might look familiar to some of you. And this little guy here is what you'll be expecting to pay about two or three pounds for. And, uh, or if you're in America, a couple of dollars. But it does seem to do the job. And it's got a, uh, I mean, lots of people are saying that they get on with it quite well. Um, what I've found in my robot is it really doesn't like it. Um, it's just not very accurate when you're, because um, I've got a four motor setup. And for some reason, um, it might just be the controller set that I'm using. Um, but this doesn't seem to be um, particularly accurate for our purposes and we're using the uh, Hobby King two channel um, steering wheel handset which is this one here so this is what we're using the uh, Hobby King GT2 so oh no Bert's bit the dust Oh, glomets. <laughs> anyway, that's the uh, receiver we're using as well. There we go. Yeah, GT2R. Um, so yeah, basically when we're using this one, um, they're pretty generic. You know, they're kind of the uh, no frills brand, um, which is kind of what you want when you're using a robot. You want something that's quite cheap and disposable. Um, you know, you don't want to pay too much money. But um, yeah, we were finding uh, there's some accuracy issues with this, but if you're using um, you know some of the six channel systems this doesn't seem to be too much of a problem and you know they seem to be okay um, one thing I will say about these is that you can get away with using this at slightly lower voltages um, our robots gonna be operating at 14.8 um, this seems to be happy down to about six volts you know it seems to stay fairly accurate at that kind of voltage um, this one is the uh, that's the GWS version. Now this is significantly more expensive, uh, coming in at usually about sort of twelve to uh, twenty pounds, depending how uh, sort of generous the person selling it is. Um, so yeah, this is the uh, sort of slightly better version, although. The soldering skills um, are something to be desired. Absolutely <laughs> hideous. Um, I kind of wish they just sent me the circuit board and allowed me to uh, solder the thing myself, because that is just appalling. But anyway, um, to my surprise, this thing does actually work. And um, if you are like entering a state of low voltage, you know, like when I was testing it down to sort of six volts. Um, this was actually quite inaccurate. It was creating all kinds of issues and, yeah, very sort of glitchy and buggy. But when you start running it at uh, 12 volts and upwards, um, this thing's happy as Larry. And uh, you really do get a tighter feel to your robot. Um, so I would highly recommend, um, you know, trying one of these. If you're getting issues from the cheapest, cheapest chips one, then I would come in and try out one of the uh, try one of the GWS ones um, well that's pretty much it on them there's not much else that can be said um, these GWS ones are very happy with both um, the GT2 handset down there and also the, the sort of six channel uh, systems that are out there uh, spectrum etc um, so yeah that's your two options I hope that helps any questions um, feel free to ask um, you can get me on uh, the blog or YouTube and uh, subscribe, like, follow, whatever and I'll catch you guys later.